Welcome back freshwater fishing novices, new viewers. My name is Moles. It's Freshwater Fishing Novice Friday. This is the Freshwater Fishing Novice YouTube channel. This week we're going to be talking about how to clean a fish. I was up in the air if I wanted to make a video about how to clean a fish because of the violence, how aggressive. It's a dirty job and I didn't think that YouTube would want to see it. A lot of my viewers are asking me how how do you clean a fish properly? So I'm not going to be using a real fish. I'm, I'm going to be walking you guys and girls and other anglers through how I clean a fish. Let's talk about the things I do when I clean a fish and how I properly handle a fish and all that other stuff. Let's get into it. So obviously the first step is catching a fish. We caught a fish. Whatever. Let's get that out of the way. We already did that. Not a real fish. You can see it's rubber. There's a hole. This is one of them. Blop, 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 blop. Uh, talking, what is it? Larry Largemouth or whatever. Anyway, this is the fish I'm going to be demonstrating on. So the first step, I would say most of my viewers don't have boats, kayaks. They're fishing from shore. So what are you going to do when you catch a fish? If you're going to catch more than one fish and clean and eat these fish, you're probably going to want a stringer. What's a stringer? It's, a long, it's not string, it's, do I even have it around here? I'll just put a picture right there. That's what a stringer is. And the way you run a stringer is that metal thing right there, and then all the line coming off of it. What you do is you put that metal thing up through the gills, you know, where the hole is on the gills, and out the mouth, and then you, you, you loop it through the other part of the line and tie it off to your boat or a stick on shore and stuff like that to keep the fish in the water fresh, alive. You don't want to let that fish die before you're ready to properly clean it. So you have your fish in the water. He's got a stringer through his gills and through his mouth. He's swimming around. Good to go. So now let's get these, well, are we going to get these fish back to the house? What are we going to do? Let's talk about the next step. The next step is dispatching, terminating, Killing the fish. Murdering the fish? You're, well, okay, you are murdering it. Let's talk about trout first. I was talking to a trout fisherman three or four years ago, and he was saying that when you say you catch a trout and you want to end that fish's life, you're going to eat it and bring it to the table and cook it and everything else. Trout have very weak spinal columns and necks. So what you can do is Sorry for the graphicness of this. You grab the trout by the head and just crack it. And you crack that spinal column and that kills the fish. It's a little bit violent, but killing anything is violent. And if you don't have to and you're not going to eat the fish, don't kill the fish. Aside of trout, everything else like rock bass, yellow perch, any other fish you're going to eat. Just for instance, when I'm on my kayak, I keep a fish stringer so these fish are alive. When I get back to my launch area where I'm ready to load out and get home, this is when I dispatch the fish. What I do is, well, let's show you the tool you're going to need. That's right. It's a knife. Now, this is a specific knife. I'm going to assume that not everyone has the knife skills that I have. And that's why I was apprehensive about making this video because this fillet knife... You can see how flexible it is. You can really put bend in it, but this thing is so sharp. If you even nick yourself, you'll be bleeding very seriously. I was concerned about telling you guys how to use a fillet knife. I have a couple decades of experience with knives. Not fillet knives, chef knives, uh, kitchen knives, anything else like that. So obviously fillet knives are in that category but these things are dangerous. You gotta be really careful. You're dealing with a slimy fish. Your hands are wet. It's hard to get a grip. And then you're dealing with a very sharp, flexible knife that you could really cut into the meat of your hand. So you wanna be careful with a fillet knife. Now this is a cheap fillet knife from uh, Walmart. And it's an Ozark Trail. Uh, how comfortable you are with knives, but you have to be careful with knives. 
because the amount of damage you can do to yourself quickly and maybe you're not near a hospital is an issue. So that's why I was concerned about telling you guys how to, how to fillet in a fish. Of the danger behind this knife, I don't know how to express how sharp this knife is. You got your knife. So I'm gonna use the back of the, the back of the blade just so I don't cut my fake fish. So when I catch, when I'm ready to dispatch my fish, I hold my fish, you know. What I do is right along the throat, right here. Right below the gills, I cut that part and make a big incision. Basically, I'm gonna put this knife down before I hurt myself. Basically, you're taking the blade this is just the plastic sheath and you're cutting just not repeatedly you're cutting once so and you're cutting the jugular on the fish and what you're doing there is you're gonna bleed the fish so you want to be near water so you can have it in the water it's gonna bleed out and die good to go it's a fresh catch now you can get to the next step so the next step is gonna be gutting the fish so you've already bled the fish so obviously the guts are inside the fish. I'm gonna put this knife down and we're gonna go back to a safer sheath. Now the way you gut a fish is gross. It's wicked gross. So what you do, let's say this is the blade side and you hold your fish upside down. Now it's, it's already dead, it's bled out, you rinsed it out with water and stuff like that to clean it. There's the anal fin. I know, anal, gross. There's a little dot right about here on the fish, even though you can't see it on this fish. So what you're gonna do is you're going to take your sharp fillet knife and you're going to cut from here, from the anal fin, up to where you cut its neck. And you're not gonna go deep. And I'm talking about, you're using that much of the tip of the knife. I mean, you do not want to cut into any of the organs, the intestines, any of that stuff. And it's, all that stuff's in the fish. You realistically cut from the anal fin and barely break the skin. And I'm talking centimeters. So you, you cut the fish like that. And that's how you open the fish up to get ready to gut it. Now this part is gross. The first time you do it, it's sickening gross nasty you got to keep in mind that you're gonna eat this fish and this is a important part to make this fish not be rancid nasty and taste bad now that you've cut the fish from here from the anal fin or the anal cavity or anus it's butthole really it's what it is you're gonna cut from here to here and now what you can do is you can open that fish up you can spread that thing open I know this is gross. You're gonna stick two of your fingers and your thumb in there and grab everything soft and pull it out. Nasty, right? So you pull all the guts, the intestines, the heart, the liver, all that stuff inside that open fish. When you open it up, you pull all that out and you're gonna to wanna to be near water again so you can rinse your fish off in your hands. Now that you've gutted the fish, what do you do with the guts? Hopefully you have a plastic bag, you can toss that stuff in, or maybe there's a trash can. It's, you're not really supposed to throw that stuff back in the water. I don't know why, like nothing's gonna eat it. Throw it in the trash. Get, bring a plastic bag if you plan on catching and cooking so you have something to throw the guts in because it's nasty. Just rinse off that fish very good in the creek, river, the lake, whatever it is. If you have running water, you can use that, but you wanna make sure all the cavity that chest cavity of the fish is cleaned out. There's no guts in it. What's the next step? So the next step we're gonna be talking about is scaling the fish. So if it's a trout or a salmon, you don't have to do that. They have different skin. But if this fish has scales, you gotta get that off because one, it's not fun to eat, doesn't taste good, and it's hard. All right, let's talk about scaling this fish. We've already dispatched it. We've already gutted it. Now, to scale it, this is a messy process. You don't want to do this inside. Scaling a fish is really messy. One of my executive producers, 
who has been a chef for decades, told me was, whoa, 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 what are you doing? You're gonna do that inside? Mm, let me get you a little set up here. I scaled, I don't know how many rock bass last year, and there were fish scales all over the yard because I did it outside because of my buddy was like, don't, don't do that inside, dude. It's gonna get everywhere. You'll be cleaning fish scales for years. You take your fish, and what you effectively do is with a spoon, a butter knife that's not sharp, you know what I mean? You go from tail to head and scrape these scales off repeatedly. Bang, 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 bang. You're gonna do this for a while. It took me a, probably an hour to do a whole bunch of fish. To scrape the scales off so there's no scales, they're gonna be flicking everywhere, all over the place. You want a bucket of water to rinse the fish and also rinse the knife so you can get the scales off as you're doing it. What are you holding it like this and doing it? I mean, you could. I found that going to the dollar store, getting a dollar store cutting board. Now let's say you got your fish on there. You get one of these clamps from the hardware store. And what you do is clamp the tail. So now you can hold the cutting board and scrape the scales away from you. So if you were doing it this way, you're just flicking scales at yourself, which is Silly, don't do that. It's gonna hold the fish there. This dispatched dead fish that's been gutted and bled out. And you scrape the scales, all the scales on this side, till it's very smooth. And then you're gonna flip the fish over and you're gonna do the same on the other side. It's gonna take a little bit. It's pretty messy. So don't wear your nicest church clothes. Now that you've scaled the fish, you can either cook the fish like this which is not my preferred method. I like doing fillets. So how do you do a fillet? Also, the fillet is probably the most dangerous part. If you're not comfortable with a knife, I wouldn't suggest trying to fillet this fish. But then you have to be aware of the bones when you're eating it. I like to fillet because I don't like worrying about the bones. Let's talk about how to fillet a fish properly. Okay, so we got our dollar store cutting board. We got our fillet knife. If I show you this, let's see if I can do this right. You can see how that fillet knife bends. It's very thin, very sharp. You wanna utilize that bend in that knife to help you fillet this fish. If we take the same cutting board, the clips, so you smash the living heck out of this fish's face. So now you're gonna fillet it. It's securely held by this clip so your hand's safe. You wanna set this down on a surface, so a table, You've already descaled it, you've already rinsed it again. So now comes the weird part where you're gonna have to cut into this fish. Right behind the gills, right here, you're gonna cut in until you hit the rib cage. So what happens is you go in like this, you hit the rib cage, and then you're gonna rotate the knife. And you're going to, you're gonna run it along the rib cage. You go in, and you're coming up like this. This isn't for novices. I don't know why I'm telling you guys about this, but you wanna be careful. You're gonna feel the knife bouncing off the ribs and you're gonna cut the fillet. And as you come to the tail, you come up. The other thing you should do before you do that is cut off the fins. You don't need those fins. They're just in the way. They're gonna get be a problem. This fin right here, that's a problem. You can cut that off. In, rotate, and then you're gonna kinda pull it up. It's a very finesse way of using a knife. It's not chop, 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 like you're cutting vegetables or a steak. It takes a little bit of practice. You'll probably get some bones. Just be careful when you get your filet. Like when you're, when you're done with it, you wanna peel it apart, look, is there any bones? Pick those out. When you're eating it, be careful. I gotta put this thing down before I hurt myself. Then you flip it over and you repeat that process. So the next step after you've mangled the living heck out of your filet, because it's the first time doing it, it's not gonna be perfect, you can do one of two things. You can leave the skin on, which you've already scaled, so it's totally fine to eat after you cook it. And it actually is, it's a little bit crispy. It's, it's pretty good actually. It tastes, typically I'll leave the, the skin on, scales off, but if you don't wanna do that, you can, you can use the filet knife to cut that skin away. But it's a lot of flavor. You shouldn't cut that off. It's like uh, cutting all the fat off a steak. I mean, you need a little bit of fat 
for the flavor. I suggest cooking it with the skin on. And when you, when you cook it, skin down first, and then you flip it. So the other important thing you wanna do after you've dispatched, gutted, scaled the fish, rinsed it off, when you're transporting it back to your house, unless you're cooking it on site, you want that fish on ice. Before you go fishing, if you know you're gonna catch fish, ice packs, right to the store to grab ice, make sure you have a cooler, that way you can do it, like transport it properly, you want that fish as cold as possible. So I mean not frozen, but on ice until you get home to cook that fish. All right, viewers, subscribers, I'm not sure if this answered all your questions about filleting a fish and how to properly clean a fish. I know there's gonna be some things I missed. This is how I dispatch, gut, clean a fish, scale it, and then fillet it. That's exactly how I do it. That being said, I have more than two decades of experience using knives in a professional environment, working 40 plus hours a week. I'm very comfortable with knives. I've cut myself with many knives. Still got all my fingers, thumbs, but I have a ton of scars. I want you viewers, subscribers, ladies, gentlemen, children, do not do this. If you're over 18, sure, make sure you have insurance. But you can seriously F yourself up with one of these knives. I mean, I've cut into this part of my hand before with a fillet knife. And you wanna talk about your skin just opening up, this thing will do it. Please, please be careful when you're filleting a fish. They don't teach you in grade school how to do this. They don't teach you in high school how to do this. If I hadn't spent a lot of my adult years in restaurants, I wouldn't know how to use this knife and I would probably hurt myself. So I want everyone to be careful with using knives. You never cut your, towards yourself, never cut towards yourself. It's always a way. Knives are dangerous, accidents can happen and you might not be near a hospital or have any help. So you gotta be, you gotta be extremely careful with knives. Okay, enough of the safety stuff. Not enough of the safety stuff. I wanna talk about something else. This, this request for this video was sent by one, not just one of you viewers. Multiple viewers have asked me for this. And I'm, I was worried about telling you guys how to use knives because of how serious I think they are. But he was asking, and I, I, you know, I know where this guy's located, and so I won't say who it is. He knows who he is. Dude, you know who you are. You're in Michigan. So I did a little bit of research online because I know there was a problem where I am about there's a chemical that's occurring in freshwater fish right now. P -A P -F -A -S -P -F -S -A. I'll post it right here. Now, I can't even pronounce whatever this is that's in the water that's occurring in fish. I know this forever chemical is occurring in fish in Michigan, where this viewer is asking me how to clean fish. So, first off, you probably shouldn't be eating the freshwater fish because of the chemicals that are in the fish. Where I am, the CDC issued a warning saying, do not eat freshwater fish, which is a little bit of a hindrance because I had someone else that request a catch and cook again. I'll probably do a catch and cook with one fish and really limit that because I don't want those chemicals in me, even though, I don't know, the, the, that chemical, the forever chemicals, They've been mass produced since, was it 1940? These chemicals have been leaching into the water, affecting our fish, our deer, our water sources. And where do they come from? Non-stick pans. Where's the other one that it comes from? Who cares? Why are we producing this chemical that's gonna poison us in the long run? Thanks a lot, ancestors. Check your local guidelines, your fishing game department, all that stuff. Check that to see if it's okay to eat the fish and what they suggest before you go, oh, we'll just go, it's fish, we're good to go. I don't want, I'm, the mercury levels in fish is crazy. I talked to a guy today, he was talking about how catfish is one of the most delicious fish, 
but you can only eat a little bit of it because of the mercury levels. I don't know if you guys know about mercury levels, but in Alice in Wonderland, the Mad Hatter, that dude was exposed to mercury. Call, one of the reasons they call him the Mad Hatter because he went crazy because back in the day, they used to have lead line and mercury lined top hats and that would make you lose your bananas. So I don't want any of my viewers, subscribers, anyone really to be getting mercury poisoning because that would just be another lunatic on the street, which clearly we already have enough of. Last thing I'm gonna say before we wrap this video up, guys, is girls, anglers, freshwater fishing novices, I have an opportunity to be on a podcast called Sippin' with the Dixons. Mr. Dixon is one of my subscribers, personal friends. I can't wait to be on your podcast. Sippin' with the Dixons is all about taste testing, beer, wine, different things like that. If you guys are interested in alcohol and you're over the age and you want to hear that podcast, you can find, where can you find the Sippin' with the Dixons? Spotify? Apple Podcasts? I'll just, put the, I'll just put the picture up here. Sipping with the Dixons. If you guys want to hear me talk while I'm under the influence, that's the place to go. He asked me to pick out a beverage, and I asked what he liked. IPAs. I got a double IPA on his way, and uh, mine's in the fridge. As soon as he gets it and gets it cold, hopefully we can sit down and make that podcast, and you guys can hear our opinion on this double IPA and he asked me to pick out something that was fishing related obviously because freshwater fishing novice I'm not gonna give anything else away if you guys want to hear about this beer that is fishing related and local to my area tune in to sipping with the Dixons other than that thanks for watching the freshwater fishing novice YouTube channel it's been freshwater fishing novice Friday my name is moles I'm the freshwater fishing novice if you guys like this video, hit that subscribe button, click the like button. If you have any suggestions about future videos or questions you have, please leave them down in the comments below. Hope you guys have a great weekend. I'll catch you next Friday.